Life in Outer Space, How Humans Meet Their Needs in Outer Space. So in this lesson we're covering human space history, the ISS, obtaining oxygen and removing carbon dioxide, eating in space, sleeping in space, showering and using the bathroom in space, experiments in space, getting sick in space, and the negative effects of microgravity. We're going to wrap up by talking about the long-term solutions to living in outer space. So first let's take a look at some brief space history. So October 4th, 1957, the first artificial satellite was launched in outer space. It was called Sputnik 1 and it was launched by the Soviet Union. January 31st, 1958, the first successful American satellite was launched. And April 12, 1961, the first human went to space. That was Soviet Union cosmonaut Yuri A. Gagarin. And he went on a 108-minute flight. He circled the Earth once at a peak altitude of about 320 kilometers, and then came back to Earth. On July 20, 1969, we had our first man on the moon. That was Neil Armstrong, followed closely by Buzz Aldrin. Everyone who thinks the moon landing was fake is incorrect. There are tons of things you can look up, scientific evidence, showing exactly what happened and why it's something that could not have been faked. 1977 saw Voyager 1 and 2 being launched. Now, currently, they're traveling about 62,000 kilometers per hour, and they're about 22 billion kilometers away from Earth. And in September of 2013, they left our solar system. April 25th, 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was deployed, and since it's been deployed, it's been giving us lots of beautiful pictures that we simply can't get from Earth. On July 4th, 1997, the first Mars rover landed on Mars, which was a significant achievement, and one that we've duplicated multiple times since. Now, the ISS. This is where most of this lesson is going to be taking place. The ISS is a collaborative effort between the U.S., Russia, Canada, Japan, and other participating countries of the European Space Agency. It costs about $100 billion U.S. dollars to build. It started in 1998 and it was completed about 13 years later. It's about the size of an NFL football field. It's solar-powered, and you can see the solar panels right there, 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 and there. It weighs about a million pounds, and it's our microgravity research base, where experiments that can't be done on Earth can be performed. It's usually home to about three astronauts at a time, and their missions last for about six months. Now, for the next two slides, what I want you to do is I want you to create a predict, observe, and explain chart. For your prediction section, I want you to predict what's going to happen before we watch the video. While you're watching the video, I want you to fill in the observe section. And then after the video, I want you to explain what happened. So just a very simple chart, predict, observe, and explain. Your chart should look something like this. Very simple, predict, observe, explain. So first up, what happens to tears in space? So I want you to predict what's going to happen. And then while you're watching the video, write down what's happening. And then I want you to explain what happened. Same thing for wringing out a washcloth in space. So what happens on Earth when you wring out a washcloth, that water falls down into the sink. So what do you think is going to happen in space? Now, a very important aspect about living in space is that we need to have oxygen and we need to remove the carbon dioxide that we produce. Most of the oxygen available comes from a process called electrolysis, which uses electricity to split water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, using this formula right here. And then to remove the carbon dioxide that's floating around, because carbon dioxide is poisonous to humans, we're going to use charcoal filters to remove the carbon dioxide from the air. So pause the video and watch number four so you can get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Eating in space. So if you ever watch the show Star Trek, what they have is this thing called a replicator. And if you take a look at video number five, it's really short. It shows you exactly what I'm talking about. But anyways, you go up to the machine, you say, you know, I'd like a hamburger, and it creates a hamburger out of the atoms that it has already stored in the system. Eating in space is not quite like that. In the very early years, in fact, everything that was consumed was this vacuum-sealed paste and things that weren't great to eat. Today we have a lot better food. You can see our food is packaged right here. Everything is still vacuum sealed, but it's much more edible and it's very similar to the kinds of things we eat today. And you can see down here a picture of them eating hamburgers and they have an apple, right? So things are very similar to what we eat at home. The problem is in space, things tend to float away. So you need to have your knives and forks and stuff like that all magnetically attached to your dinner plate. Otherwise it's going to float away. So pause the video and have a look at number six. It's an interesting look at how someone can eat in space. Sleeping in space. Each member has their own little private sleeping area. You can see right here. So since they're weightless, what they do is they jump into their sleeping bag inside their little sleeping quarters, and then they're going to attach that sleeping bag to the wall using this little tether cord, and that just prevents them from floating away. Now, there's no up and down in space, and that can be a little hard to understand sometimes. But in space, you don't need to lie down, because there's no down. So all you got to do is just go into your sleeping pod, into your sleeping bag. There's no need to lay your head back, because your head doesn't fall back. It's a very comfortable place just to be floating there, and that's how they sleep. So I'm looking at number seven to see what I mean. Showering and using the bathroom in space. Now, they need to do this very carefully. So what I want you to do is I want you to take notes in the space below while you're watching the video clips. So pause the video, watch number eight, and fill in the space below, and then watch video number nine and fill in the information about using the bathroom in space. Just a brief overview of what happens. Research, research, research. The main reason for the ISS is research. The uniqueness of being in microgravity allows scientists to do many experiments that they can't do on Earth. 
for instance, you can't grow things on Earth in microgravity because there is no microgravity on Earth. We have a full force of gravity affecting us here. So you can't do experiments that simulate microgravity when you don't have microgravity. So what they do is they do the experiments up on the ISS. Now, these experiments are very important. If we're ever going to get to Mars or Jupiter or Saturn or beyond our solar system, we need to be able to do things like grow crops in outer space. So they do a lot of these kinds of experiments on the ISS to figure out the best way of doing it. They also do a lot of research on things like dark matter, the health effects of being in outer space, and cancer research. Now, the 10 main points from this slide are actually captured in this video here. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to pause the video and watch number 10 and have a look at the 10 most exciting ISS experiments currently going on right now. Getting sick in space, something that you really don't want to do. Not only is it not preferable to be sick anytime, but getting sick in space can be very dangerous as the nearest doctor is really far away. Also, your immune system may not work quite as well, which means it might take longer to get better. Many medical instruments and medicine are included on the space station's medical kit, and each astronaut is trained in basic medical techniques. So if anyone needs help, they can help each other. So pause the video and have a look at number 11, and it's going to talk a little bit more about getting sick in space. Our bodies in microgravity. The absence of forces against our muscles caused by microgravity has a significant short and long-term health consequences. So if you think about being on Earth, when you're standing on Earth, there's a force of gravity keeping you down. Now, since you don't go into the ground, there must be an equal and opposite force going up, and that's the muscles in your legs and your bones of the body. And what happens is that just by standing there, you're counteracting the force of gravity. You're using the strength in your muscles and bones to keep you upright. When there's no force of gravity, there's no need for your muscles to push upwards as well. So what happens is since your body doesn't need to use those muscles, it stops developing them. It actually starts to break them down so it can use the stuff in the bones and the muscles for other things inside your body that are actually being used. And that's not good. That's not what we want. To prevent these effects from happening, astronauts have a very rigorous exercise regime, which includes them working out for two to three hours per day on things like this. So here you can see a treadmill. Now, treadmills are interesting because, of course, in microgravity, you float away. So what we see here is that the person is actually tethered to the treadmill, keeping her down, simulating more like running on Earth. So what happens to our bodies in microgravity? Well, eyesight can be affected. So things like blurred vision, flattening of the eyeball, swelling of the optic nerve, building up of fluids, these are all things that can affect your vision in outer space. Muscle atrophy, that's what I was just talking about. If your muscles aren't being used, then your body's going to break them down and use those molecules for other things. And the same thing for the bones. The bones aren't going to need to be nearly as strong because there's no need for them to keep you upright. So what's going to happen is your body's going to start breaking down your bones, and you're going to lose about 2% of your bone mass per month, which may not seem significant, but if you're up there for six months, it does wreak havoc on your body, especially when you come back to Earth, and all of a sudden you do have to fight against gravity constantly. So have a look at number 14 to see a few more of the main effects that microgravity has on our body. Additionally, being in microgravity for an extended period of time can cause disorientation or nausea. It can change your appearance due to fluid shift, and it can have mental effects on you. Additionally, being exposed to radiation, because on Earth, we're protected by this magnetic field. So if this is Earth, we have this protecting shield around us, which prevents the harmful rays from the sun from getting us. But when you're on the ISS and you're floating around out here, there's no protecting layer. So those harmful rays will get you a lot more than they will on Earth. Now, there are protections in place on the ISS, but you're still being exposed to more radiation than you would on Earth, and this can lead to things like cancer later in life. So what are the long-term solutions? There does seem to be a lot of doom and gloom when it comes to our bodies in microgravity for extended periods of time. So therefore, if we were to do any kind of mission to Mars or beyond, we're going to need to be able to simulate this gravity. We're going to need to create the gravity. And this can be done using the principles of circular motion. So what we're going to do, or what we could do, is we're going to create a space station. And it kind of looks like this top picture here, where you have a circular exterior. And that circular exterior is going to spin. So if it spins in this direction, what's going to happen is that it's going to create a centrifugal force, which is going to pin your feet essentially, to the outside of the ship, no matter where you are. Think of it like those carnival rides, where you get pinned to the sides, it spins really, really fast. That's the same idea. So no matter where you are, your feet are going to be in the outside.